It's not Vereniki, it's not Shalambao, it's its own thing. Wow. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful sunny Tbilisi, the capital of the Republic of Georgia. I am so excited, my 84th country. I arrived last night and today I'm gonna to take you to explore all the main attractions here in the historical center. We're gonna see a waterfall, clock tower, a bridge, and then for lunch I'm taking you to eat Kinkali and Kachapuri. So Kinkali is like uh, dumplings, Kachapuri is cottage cheese with bread. I am so pumped, I'm excited. Sophie. Hello. We ready? Come with us. Sure, we are ready. Let's explore Tbilisi. Huh? And we're starting our tour off here at St. George statue, which is Freedom Square, right? Uh, during the Soviet Union time, here we had uh, Lenin's uh, Square, and obviously there was a Lenin statue. And then when we became independent, one of the first things we did, we removed the Lenin statue, and then uh, I replaced it with St. George statue, which is considered to be guardian of Georgia. Let me show you the symbol of Tbilisi. Here is written Tbilisi with Georgian alphabet. And uh, wherever you see this sign, it means that you are on main touristic route in Tbilisi. Yeah, and the Georgian alphabet is not Cyrillic. It's like its own thing. Yes, it is. Yes, and we are proud about it. <laughs> it is Sioni Church from 13th century. And in Sioni Church, we uh, have really important relic for Georgians, a cross of Saint Nino. Saint Nino was uh, a lady, young lady, who brought Christianity in Georgia in the 4th century. Saturday morning and church is in service so we just walked to the very back and we saw the cross and you said the cross is made out of grape tree. Uh, grape tree okay so like grape vines basically right, right. awesome and so what's the story behind it according to the legend Saint Nino saw Mother Mary in her dream uh, Mother Mary asked her to come to Georgia and make Georgia a Christian country when she woke up from her dream she found two branches of grape tree and she decided to tie those two uh, branches with her with her own hair. So this is how we got St. Nino's cross and then we became Christian country. <laughs> and if you guys didn't know, this is the cradle of wine, right? Some of the best wines on the planet are in this country. I'm going there like in three days to where like the actual wine region, but we're gonna try some wine for lunch, I'm sure. You have to, right? When you're in Georgia, you drink and enjoy life. This is life in Georgia. <laughs> and this is the museum of the Caravan Sarai. If you guys don't know what Caravan Sarai is, that is basically hotels during the Silk Road, you know, time. This is where people, merchants would come through and they'd sleep here on their way to the next city or the next destination. So this is Caravan Sarai from uh, 18th century. We had 13 Caravan Sarais in Tbilisi before 19th century, before railroad was introduced uh, to uh, Georgia. Afterwards, uh, it really lost its sense because uh, transporting goods became much faster um, uh, but before then this is the area where they would keep their goods and animals and the merchants themselves would take uh, um, a place on uh, ground floor and first floor. I've been to Caravan Sarai's in Uzbekistan obviously there's a little different it's more open air I'm sure this was open air bottom stables you know all your horses pigs whatever like farm right <laughs> style and then upstairs this is where they would sleep Awesome. Okay, let's go. So this uh, statue, I guess this guy's drinking the wine, right? This is where you have the wine? Yes, yes. Uh, can you guess uh, what, what was the title of this man? The winemaker? <laughs> Very close. Uh, he's called Tamada. Tamada is Toastmaster, leader of Georgian Supra. He's in charge of entertaining people, saying uh, um, colorful toasts so that everybody gets involved. He has to be he has to be very much educated, he has to sing well, say poems, and so on and so forth. So the original statue they found dates back to the 7th century BC. This guy. Awesome. <laughs> and that's at the Archaeological Museum, right? Right. This is a street named after Jean Chardin, who was a French traveler from the 17th century. So the street's made up of just open air or terrace restaurants, right? So they got the restaurant, and here you could just relax. Open air, right? This one's Marrakesh, so Morocco. Obviously, you probably have hookah. Sure. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. And just restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. Obviously, right now it's nine in the morning, so this will probably start popping off. Let's say at noon, right? Noon it starts to, you know, there's action here. Now I'm hungry. 
<laughs> we just came from this street, and right when you exit, you have the fortress right up here. Maricala Fortress, okay. which was founded in 4th century and then was renovated many times because of the invasion we had in Georgia. <laughs> exactly. So we're going to explore the fortress tomorrow, I think, right? Sure. And that's also the funicular. You have Mother of Georgia right there. So that's a statue. You have this in most of the countries in the area have like a mother of the country, right? And we're going to that church, right? Metehi Church and Vartan Gorgasali, who was founder of Tbilisi. Awesome. Okay, let's go. All the new life of all the Tbilisi because of the architectural style you can see on this side of uh, Tbilisi and on the other side we can see all the Tbilisi with authentic ar architecture. And over there we have the Peace Bridge which we'll visit shortly. We're gonna cross the street and go up here, right? That's how we do it in Georgia, just cross the street. <laughs> Wow, incredible. What a spot. This right here in the center, like smack center, right? This is it. Beautiful. Mkvari. Mkvari. Mm -hmm. International name is Kura. It takes, uh, it starts from Turkey, then comes to the east part of Georgia, afterwards goes to Azerbaijan and Caspian Sea. Total length is about 1,500 kilometers. So we made it to the top here to Metehi, 13th century church. Here we have the statue of the founder, and over here we have the river, and what incredible views. So what's the legend? You were telling me something happened, he came here. Wachtang loved hunting, so one day when he came with his uh, uh, bird, a falcon, uh, falcon decided to catch a pheasant. Um, they started fighting, fell somewhere, and that some, some place was uh, hot springs. They got boiled, uh, and when Wachtang saw all of this, uh, he got amazed with this discovery and decided to found a city called the Tbilisi. Incredible, now you know exactly what it means Tbilisi warm and the hot spring area is actually right over there right across the river you know beneath the fortress now we're gonna go up here uh, Medehi church is uh, from 13th century uh, it has an interesting uh, history uh, during uh, every invasion unfortunately it was destroyed and renovated over and over and again uh, but during Soviet era it was changed into a theater and that's why we cannot see any frescoes inside uh, the walls were whitewashed um, and only after Georgia became independent church service restarted there. Look at this. You can see the different eras, right? Different stones as it was rebuilt. This is the biggest difference, right? So the huge blocks is part of the foundation. And over here, another era, right? I have no idea what era that is, but you can 17, see. 18, 19. So it just keeps going in different centuries, right? Currently, church is in service and they don't allow photography inside, just so you guys know, but you should definitely visit this church, 13th century church. Really important, obviously, right here in the Smack Center. From here, you have the best views of the city. I mean, it's gorgeous. I love the architecture. Really, really pretty. So many different layers, different times, you know. Obviously, it was destroyed, reconstructed, destroyed, reconstructed. Can't get enough of the view. The view here is insane. We are going to uh, discover Lefta Heavy Waterfall. Uh, it's a hidden gem. <laughs> Not many people know about it, so come on. So we're crossing the river and it's basically in the warm area where the founder of the city's bird boiled. Yes. <laughs> And these are the sulfur baths of Tbilisi. This is where the falcon fell and the symbols right here, right? So you have a little statue of the falcon. We have the beautiful baths. They were all built in the 17th century. Over here to the left, we have some of the buildings built in the 19th century, souvenir shops, restaurants, residential on top. And over here, you can see, this is where the waterfall and the sulfur spring connects. You can smell it, right? Wow, so it's like a little stream. You have the baths to the left. Over here to the right, we have another bath that is the women's baths, right? So the colors are like Uzbekistan colors. It reminds me of a mosque in Uzbekistan. I traveled there about two or three years ago. Gorgeous. So if you go up here, we'll get to the waterfall at the very end, right? Well, this bath used to be for only women. Now we are kind and we share it with men as well. <laughs> it's still working uh, and there are different services. From one to ten people can get it. Um, the, there is included also massage, uh, sauna, hot spring, cold shower. So only thing you have to do, come and enjoy Sulfur Buses in Tbilisi. 
And the reason they have these baths is because obviously Georgia's gone through many different hands throughout history. Arabs, Persians, Russians, I mean, such Mongols. a big influence. Yeah, right. Mongols. All right, so let's keep going. Let's go to the waterfall. So you have this boardwalk that goes along the entire Sulphur Spring. At the very end, we have the waterfall. And on the way, you can see these beautiful 19th century buildings. And you were saying the balconies. This is like typical architecture of Tbilisi. Those beautiful wooden balconies uh, are typical architecture of old Tbilisi. And one more thing, they usually are on the edge of the cliffs because Georgians love difficult situations. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. And you can smell the sulfur. I mean, it gets stronger and stronger as you make your way to the waterfall. Wow. Look at this. We're just like going through. This is like a gorge, right? Like a little valley in here. Incredible. Look at this. Right in the center of the capital. Le Tajeri Waterfall. Okay, so there's a natural waterfall right here in this gorge. Hidden gem. Look at this. Beautiful. I wouldn't go back there and obviously you're not allowed to because there's this railing so don't go there and if you want you can leave a love lock that's what they have here so love locks all over the place on all the bridges and yeah just another hidden gem it's beautiful but i am ready for some kachafuri so the restaurant we're going to is called restaurant rigi it's a 10 minute drive Ooh. short 10 minute drive and we're here at rigi it's right here this looks like a almost like industrial style buildings right beautiful I love this restaurant. Look, it's like rustic, modern, serving traditional cuisine. Over here to the left, you can see the kitchen. They have a tandoor, what they call it, Tony here. They're making the bread, all the cheese over there. We got fruits. I'm gonna put on, you know, a gown, obviously, to go in the kitchen. Yeah, dressed like a surgeon, right? Actually, I have no hair, so do I need the top? <laughs> I want that cachapuri so bad. I'm like dreaming of it. Hello, hello. This is Tedas Puri. I've never seen this. So it's typical Georgian bread. You know, it looks almost like an empanada, samosa. He puts it on here. It's the, this is the pillow, right? And then he puts it into the tandoor, but on the upper part, right? So it's not too deep, not too deep in the fire, just on the very tip. And this is Soguni, which is basically Georgian mozzarella, right? We can say so, yeah. Something like that, right? So they cut it, she weighs it, then she turns it into a ball, and she puts it into these cylinders, and then where does it go into the fridge? Or no? No, it just rests, not it just in the rest. fridge. Yeah. All right, and you eat it just like that, right? It gets this kind of shape. Oh, it gets into this. Okay, so this is it. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so I thought it was a different cheese. So it turns into this shape, it becomes dense, Beautiful. Can I get a piece? Can we cut a piece? Okay, so we have two different pieces. So I'm gonna try the denser one this first. This is this is before they uh, put it in hot milk. Okay. And the other one is just freshly made. Mm -hmm. Good. It's like it's less not salty. salty. Yeah, it's less and salty. This one. Mm. Oh my god. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it basically is the same, right? Yeah. Same thing as mozzarella. Mmm, that was hot. Nice and warm. Mmm, a little moist. Delicious. Delicious. More, more. <laughs> the first thing we're going to see being made is the kachapuri. But this is a different style, right? Because there's many different versions. Where is this one? It is Megralian kachapuri. And this time it will be with three different kind of cheese. Uh, the filling will be uh, with uh, sulguni, uh, drier sulguni, and the Meratian cheese. On the top we'll have a mix of cheese and some egg. It's a little different in shape. It's round, right? It almost looks like they put it into a tava. You know, like Albanian tava. And then they put it in the oven for 10 minutes. About. So it bakes 10 minutes and then it's ready to go. As you can saw, I mean, he rolled it out. Then he added three different types of cheeses. Right. Wow. Are they going to put an egg on top at the end or no? Yes, yes? later, later. Is it yeah. quail egg or just regular egg? Well, regular egg. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> when it's almost baked at the last minute, they are going to add some egg. Perfect. Can't wait. It's our plum sauce. We call it tremali. It's very good with fried potatoes, a barbecue, well, anything fried you can think of. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying one. Just like this, like a little cup? Oh wow, so it's almost like a, a cold, like I say vegetable soup. Okay, yeah, we're, mm. oh, it's strong. I love it though. Mmm. 
Give me another. <laughs> <laughs> and here we're seeing how they make kinkali, dumplings, Georgian dumplings, which are filled with beef and pork, and sometimes in the mountains, they fill it with lamb. Yes, traditional kinkali is made with meat, but we have different versions for vegetarians, for example, with mushroom, with potato, with cheese, and so on. So right now she's rolling out the dumpling right eventually when she has like 50 ready she moves over and mixes or fills them fills them fills them then closes it and then they put it into where tandoor Boi no, no boiled water boiled water yeah so boiled that's very similar to the veraniki in ukraine right, right so they boil right, right, it right, right. right? Yeah. awesome it will boil about 10 to 12 minutes perfect and then ready to soak for our it is, <laughs> need to boil it in two minutes i'm starving <laughs> like i haven't eaten anything yet <laughs> just some cheese and the ketchup puri is ready obviously this is a different style and it reminds me of like a pizza right so he brought it out put it on the plate cut it move down to another plate and here we have it Like How long do I have to wait for that? <laughs> so, Hingali uh, classically should have 19 folds. If you can make it with 19 folds, it means that you have mastered cooking skills of Hingali. Um, and one more interesting thing is that it should be boiled. In other countries, either it is steamed or fried, but in our country, it is boiled in a um, uh, pot uh, and for about 10 12 minutes. And that's it. She put them in. We gotta wait 10 minutes and we're ready. My friend Magdaloba. Magdaloba. <laughs> what is this? This is chaja made with grape. This is um, arachi of pear. And this is for peihua. This is how we call it. So basically, Georgian grappa or raki, right? Distilled grapes. Oh, dun dun dun. <laughs> Watch me and learn, David. <laughs> so you have to grab it from the head or belly button. Then we, we, we will make a little bite. And suck the soup. So once you drink all the soup, then you can slowly eat the rest of it, but the head. Okay, we have a lot of food. We have pork from the mountains. We have this incredible bread with the cheese we tried earlier. We have a mix of paste. It's like eggplant. Got some chilies in there. I got so much. And then obviously the kinkali. Kinkali, right? So grab it from the top, right? Ooh, from the belly button. Okay, and you go in. This is almost like in China, in Shanghai. They have xiaolongbao. Similar, you open a soup dumpling. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, that's so good. Mmm. Let's eat around, right? Mmm. Gotta pull out all the soup. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. It's mm -hmm. good manners? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Mmm. I love it. It's steamed, but it's still a little thick, right? It's dense. But then obviously you're getting deeper into it and you get the beef and the pork. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Minced beef and pork. Some onions in there. Nice soup. Oh my god. These are huge. Huge. I'm in love with it. And I like that you don't have to mix it with anything. It's just like this. It's just plain. We'll add some black pepper. I already destroyed one. And I'll say, if this is a portion for one person, that's crazy. <laughs> It's not Vereniki, it's not Shalambao, it's its own thing. Wow, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Incredible. And just letting you guys know, they brought me a craft beer, Georgian craft beer. Mm hmm. Okay, so I don't know what this is. Probably Pilsen. And obviously, next up, we have Kachapuri. So it's almost like a pizza. Mmm. Oh, wow. oh man, it's incredible. Three different cheeses. Mmm, it's straight up the Georgian pizza. This one. So we have uh, Sulguni, Emiratian cheese, and the Sulguni, but the drier version of, um, of it. And all of them are cow milk cheeses. I love this dish. <laughs> and this is obviously a different style because, you know, they have 
This one's round. Other ones are the other shape that we saw, right? And they throw the egg on top. This one, eggs are already mixed in. So a little different. Oh man, incredible. Really filling, creamy, extremely creamy. These two dishes are the best. And this is traditionally, you can find it everywhere in the country. Obviously, everywhere makes it differently. Muy <laughs> bon. And next up, we're trying their version of grappa, right? This is the grape one. And in Georgian, how do you say cheers? Garmanjos. Did I say it right? Garmanjos. Garmanjos. It tastes like grappa. <laughs> it's forte. <laughs> Ooh, but you have to have bread with it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, basically coat your stomach. And the bread here is so flaky. Mmm. So many layers. This food's outstanding. <laughs> Oh wow, mm, this is easy. Easy to drink, the pear, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in Serbia I've had something similar to this because they do a lot of pears, a lot of plums. Mm -hmm. And then this one's the, the wild one from South America. Let's do this. Mm. So next up we have woo, some paste with eggplant. We have the mozzarella suguni, suguni with the puri. And we also have this incredible salad. So this salad is cucumber, tomato, we have parsley, we have walnuts, and we have sunflower oil. Look at this beauty. So this one's like eggplant with something amazing around it. This one's leek. Wow, wow, look at and this. And it's seasoned with uh, herbs and um, uh, walnut. Okay, you know what, I have to, I have to get this guy. <laughs> the chili, my favorite. And then over here at the very end, we have this creamy one. So same thing, but with plum sauce mm -hmm. as the other one, right? So next to it, perfect. And then over here, we have some pork from the mountains, right? So I'm just gonna go, let's try it. Mm. <laughs> Quasi como prosciutto. Similar to prosciutto. <laughs> so this restaurant serves traditional food with modern touches. I'm jumping on the salad first, love salad. Tomatoes the best. Mmm. Mmm. So refreshing. Oh my gosh. And I'm personally a big fan of tomatoes over cucumber, but for this one I'll mix it. It's like another like a mushroom. With the parsley? Crunchy, moist. Mmm. Refreshing. What, what's this guy bring? Kebab. Kebab. On the house. And we also got another dish. I think we have how many dishes? Like 10 dishes here. Shkmeloli, which is basically fried chicken with so garlic, milk, and cottage cheese. Let me try one of these. Incredible how many things we're eating in one sitting, huh? <laughs> I love it. To Georgia. I you know, I know. I knew it was gonna be this in Georgia. Everybody's telling me, you're gonna eat so much in Georgia. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. So it's lightly fried, and I love the creaminess. Whoa, what is this? So, sort of the way my Italian grandmother used to do pastas. Creamy pasta with some chicken. Obviously here we're missing the pasta, but it's delicious. That place phenomenal. Wow. You know what? I'm gonna do something crazy. What do you guys think? Crazy? Yeah. Sure, I think you can try this kitchen as well before it's hot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the chef wants me to try everything. This was so hot. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you put it on top of here on the kebab, right there, like that. <laughs> so the bread, it's like a pita bread, but it's very, very thin. And you have like basically, this is a beef sausage, right? It's almost like a sausage. This food's too much. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. The spices inside this, mm, light, so good. I'm so happy. Leek with walnut and plum sauce. Crunchy, creamy, love the plum sauce. And next to it, we have the same thing without plum. Mm hmm. Plum's better, obviously, a little sweeter. Where am I going next? Well, I'm going to the amazing cheese. 
Well, I already had this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and this is basically eggplant with a similar type of creamy paste, right? Walnut, garlic, mm -hmm. parsley, mm. coriander. Yeah, so this one's less sweet. Eggplant all day. This is the best. Mm. We've eaten a lot, we drank a lot, but we still have one more thing to try. The Tony Puri. So you get a piece right, then you get this paste, which is hazelnut, different herbs, right? And then after that, you add a little cheese. Sorry about that. <laughs> Going crazy here. It's just like this. And straight to the mouth. Mmm. And the paste has chili. Dense cheese, nice tandoori bread, like Tony. So it's not super fluffy, it's not super flaky. And then you have this uh, incredible cheese mixed with this chili walnut herb paste. Gamma Jos. Hey, my friend. Gamma Jos. Gamma Jos. Wow. I'm done with the food. Is we call pelamushi. Pelamushi is made with grape juice and it's thickened with some flour very traditional dessert and this is cherry tomato sorbet and uh, some white chocolate so oh <laughs> mm -hmm. so the bottom it's like pasty right so grape juice and sunflower sunflower is huge in Georgia I'm guessing because everything has sunflower <laughs> it's fruity it's like a little jelly tin at the bottom Right? I love the white chocolate. Something like a cracker of white chocolate. Mind blowing. Thank Maglobo. you. Magloba. 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 And that's it. We explored a lot of the main attractions here. We saw a church. We saw Caravanserai. We went up to the 13th century church. We saw views from there. I mean, what an experience. Then we came here and we saw how they made two different things right so the dumplings kinkali kinkali and kachapuri and the restaurant is rigi rigi what an amazing place the food's absolutely phenomenal so many different things to try there traditional obviously with a modern twist you can also try their grappa their beer and yeah guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave a comment below subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content we'll see you in the next travel food adventure here in tbilisi Woo! I'm hot. It's like <laughs> it's like boiling right now. It's very hot, yes. <laughs> Summer in Tbilisi, get ready for the heat.